All right, it's episode 11 of our rapid rating climb, and we have the black pieces against d4. And we're going to play c6, which I've been recently playing. I've changed my repertoire from playing knight f6 against d4 setups to c6, partially because I like playing the Slav against c4, but also because it gives my opponent the opportunity to play e4, which just takes us into a Karo, which is what I play against e4. So it gives me a good chance for um, a transposition, and I'd highly recommend if you play the Karo against e4, learning the Slav as black against d4, because you can transpose a lot of the time to the Karo anyway. So here we're going to take... Knight takes, and we had this a couple episodes ago, actually, in this rating climb, and we went for the Karpov variation with knight to d7. The point is to go knight f6, but if we do it straight away, then after takes, we're going to have to take with a pawn and ruin up, not ruin, but damage the structure. Whereas with knight d7 first, now when we have knight f6, we can recapture with the knight and keep our structure well intact. Uh, real quick, I just got my first affiliate sale, which is kind of mad, um, which is the link below in the description. So basically, you can purchase a chess.com membership through that link. It's exactly the same price. I just get a small cut, which, you know, supports the longevity of the channel. So obviously, if you don't want to get a membership, don't. But if you're going to anyway, I'd really appreciate it. Um, anyway, back to the video. Our opponent goes knight g3, which... We've had a similar thing a few episodes back, I want to say. And it's just a strange move. Because after h5, the knight is in a bit of jeopardy. Now, he does have the f5 square, supported by the bishop, if we do play h4. But then we can just go e6. And our opponent's kind of just helping us develop, because we want to play e6 anyway to get our dark squared bishop out of f8. So it's just an odd way to play. He could go h4, of course, to stop us from playing h4. But then this knight is a bit loose. Um, we could maybe even try and trade a bishop for it to try and damage the structure. Or, after h4, we can just shove a knight on g4. And f3, I'd obviously love to see, because that's so weakening. We could maybe even, after h4, knight g4... Say a move like knight f, well knight f3 means f3 is never playable. But my idea is to put a queen on c7, so f3 becomes completely unplayable because the knight would be hanging, unless he puts a knight on e2 to defend it. It just looks very passive from white, this setup. You're kind of supposed to take. So yeah, h4, I think knight g4 is good. If f3, we could actually start with queen c7, and he can't take as we take the knight. So we're going to do that. If the knight does get kicked out, we can always go back to f6, or h6 even, but probably f6. So we're not really committing that much. And if we can secure this knight on the g4 square, say, he, say my opponent plays a move like knight f3, meaning that pawn f3 is never a move, then we can bring our other knight to f6, and this knight is very nicely secured. This kind of exposes why h4 isn't a great move, because our opponent would love to play h3 here to kick our knight out, but pawns don't move backwards, you know, which is why knight g3 isn't the best, because it allows us to play h5 and essentially force our opponent to play h4 himself to stop us from just barreling down the board with tempo. So now f3, I can just stick with my plan. Could play queen c7, but I don't see a point. Our opponent could get the g5 square, sure, but because we're going to have a knight on f6, h7 is going to be nicely defended. So we're going to do that. If the knight goes to f5, we can always take it with our light squared bishop and then play e6 and replace the lack of a light squared bishop by putting all of, not all, but basically all of our pawns on light squares, which is a very common idea when you trade off one of your bishops to replace the lost control 
by using pawns. Bishop g5 isn't particularly scary. I have queen b6 going after b2, which I quite like. I could go queen to a5 check, but then c3. I don't think I gain anything. Queen c7 is a move. But queen b6 comes with tempo. So I think that makes the most sense. We could even try and queenside castle. We could play like bishop e6 and queenside castle. But uh, we don't need to make that decision yet. See how white responds. A move like b3 is quite weakening to the dark squares. Um, I'm kind of regretting not playing queen c2 actually. Because the pressure on that knight is really nice with potential sacrifices on f2. We can always drop the queen back I suppose. It might be better just to go e6 and bishop d6 and have the bishop put pressure on the knight rather than the queen. Maybe that's an inaccuracy. Maybe I played queen b6 a bit, a bit without thinking just because I was attacking a pawn. Here though actually, here queen a5 forks the king and the a2 pawn. So we could just win a pawn. I don't actually see a problem. Uh, it just doesn't feel right. Like, I don't see a concrete reason that it's bad, but it doesn't feel like the right move. Hmm. I think I should trust my instinct and not play it. I think I should just develop. Could go bishop e6 attacking the a3 pawn. That's an option. Bishop e6, which looks ugly, don't get me wrong. I'm well aware that it blocks our e pawn. But if a3 is played, we just go bishop a2 attacking the rook, and then our queen takes on b2, which is very good. And if b3, blocking off the diagonal, or c4. Yeah, then I don't know where the bishop goes. We think second. Maybe then queen a5 and winning the pawn is the way to go. Because we've got another piece developed. Hmm. Concern is this bishop, but we could just go g6 and bishop g7. Although it would be very nice on this diagonal. But if we go e6, this bishop is going to be not a great piece. Like a French bishop. The French bishop is notorious for being stuck behind the e6 pawn. And part of the reason that the Cairo Khan goes for c6 rather than e6 before the d5 push is so this bishop doesn't get trapped behind the e6 pawn. So, decisions. I need to make a decision. <sighs> Never was much good with commitment, eh? Bishop e6, b3, queen a5 check, queen d2, queen takes a2. There is no rook a1 in that particular line. We do win a pawn, that's the thing, but it feels so unnatural. No, I'm gonna go e6 and play bishop d6. It just did it didn't feel correct. Like especially after b3, like bishop e6, b3, queen a5, queen d2, queen a2, castle king side. I'll actually make a note of that. Move 10, um, rook b1, bishop e6, b3, queen a5, check. Okay, we'll go over that after the game, and I'll show you why I didn't like it. 
there is a good chance the computer tells me that it was the correct way to go. But as a human, giving your opponent so much play and blocking in the development of your own pieces is kind of counterintuitive. E6 is also nice because it covers the f5 square. So let's just play normal chess. Bishop d6, target the knight. Can drop the queen back, remember. We'll have lost a move, but queen b6. What, our opponent played rook b1? Like, it's not that much of an improving move, to be honest. Like, we're not really giving him a move by going queen b6 and then back to c7. Because, you know, like I say, he just moved a rook one square across. Okay, so that's a logical move. We could take, we could not. If we take, bishop takes, do we have anything? I'd kind of like to play bishop d7 and get him to take us and open up the g-file. The only concern is bishop d7, b4, trying to look for knight c5. But then we can take... And then we've damaged his structure a bit. It looks a bit flimsy. How to exploit it? I'm not sure, but it looks flimsy. Maybe e5? Because if takes, we have mate on f2 in that particular line. Oh, he's also attacking the bishop, though. Again, I nearly just completely missed that. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, let's just take. It's a good job I've got a lot of time on the clock. <laughs> let's take. I've got no better option, I don't think. Maybe I could have dropped the bishop back, but I don't really want to use that many tempi. Could castle. King looks a little weak. So there's no need to commit to that just yet. Trying to see if we have any tactics. I don't think so. Um, Bishop d7 is a move. c5? e5, it can't be taken because of the same mating idea. Ooh, maybe we have something like e5 and then f5 and then e4. That's quite nice. E5 the knight can't take because then mate. Okay, cool. I like that. In the Karo Khan, where you trade the D-pawn for the E-pawn, a, a, a massive idea a lot of the time when the pawns are on E6 and C6 is to make a pawn break with either E5 or C5, which is why I was looking at C5 initially, because I know that's one of the main pawn breaks. And it looks scary with my king in the center of the board, but there's no direct way to attack it. And besides, he can't take the pawn anyway, because he's going to get mated. Which is part of the reason the knight on g4 is so powerful. He can castle. That is true, but then f5. What's my plan? And if f5... Right, I think this is a critical line. F5. D takes E5. We can't take the bishop because after queen takes D6, there is mate on E7. But we can play bishop C5, threatening F2, and the bishop is hanging. So I think that's a really nice line. This might be a bit much, but if he drops the bishop back, to, well, he can't go to d3 because it's a fork. But if he goes back to c2, e4, and I feel like our attack is growing in strength. Because where does the knight go? The knight could go to e5. The knight actually could go to e5. then to g6. Hmm. 
Hmm. Could take it with the... Oh, wait, no, we can just take it. No, okay. Yeah, knight e5. We can probably get away with this. There's no mate on d8 because our queen controls it. Because remember, the d-file would open. And then, maybe bishop e6. And we our, our, our king looks weak, I know. But, okay, here I just castle kingside, right? I feel like that's a waste of a move. Queen e2 doesn't do a whole lot. I mean, it pins the pawn, so I can't take the knight for now. King, hopefully, is going to be safe on h8. I'm expecting bishop b3 check first. We could have gone bishop e6, but we still wouldn't be threatening to take the knight, because our pawn would essentially be pinned to the bishop. So that wouldn't have been any better. So this looks like a very logical way of tackling the position. And we'd love to see... I mean, the knight can't go back here. Yeah, so knight e5, I thought I could just take it. I thought his plan might be f3 at the end of the line, but the pawn's pinned to the king. Now we could take with the bishop and then end up with the knight there, but then h5 hangs. Oh, h5 hangs. Oh, that's the problem. That's the problem. Hmm, okay. So we have to take. We can't take with the knight, because then queen h5 is mate. God, I'm nearly falling for everything today. Maybe we have to go g6? Don't want to play it, but maybe we're going to be safe. I'd love to play bishop e6, man. I need to get this bishop developed. Hmm. Need to consider this. This is an important moment. Problem is, g6 and the dark squares is so weak. I'm thinking of c5 to open up the queen's defense v6 so I can play bishop e6. I think that makes a lot of sense. So I need to try and connect the rooks. Wait, what? I think he missed my queen was defending this. Or is his plan bishop e6, bishop e6, queen e6, f3? And if the knight moves, then eight. Oh, h5 doesn't hang because it blocks the queen's attack. Okay, we're going to take then. It may be unpleasant after f3, but we're not losing. We can't take because the pawn is pinned to the queen. There's a lot of pins going on. <sighs> knight f6, I'm thinking just bishop takes. Not good. Not good. Knight e5. Pawn takes. And then... That's a problem. Maybe we can go g6. Hmm. Although, actually... If knight e5, pawn takes d, pawn takes e4, can I just go back to g4? I block the diagonal. His pawn is now pinned to his queen. I think that's a good trap. 
I think that's a good trap. And the important thing is he can't take the knight with the bishop. If here we obviously just go back and if he takes I think we just go back. I think that is the way to go. The knight's untouchable. He can't take the knight with anything because he has a bishop. And again, this thing of h4 earlier in the game may be coming back to bite him. Alright, I feel like the momentum is going in our favour, but we still have work to do. Let's bring the rook. Really? Does that not just sack a pawn? So if queen takes... If queen takes, queen takes... Rook takes, rook takes, knight takes, rook e1, he might be infiltrating. So if queen takes, queen takes, knight takes... Then he can't bring the other rook over. Hmm, we don't have to take. We can take on a2 as well. It's an option. Hmm. <laughs> we can't take with the knight because h5 hangs. I'm tempted by g6. Just to secure the f5 pawn before I take. Bishop f6 isn't a move because knight takes. So what about g6? g6 maybe queen b5. I feel like this is forcing. I don't think I'm blundering anything. I'm sure he knows that he hung the pawn, but he's trying to get active counterplay, which might be the best way of going about this position for him. The problem is rook takes, rook takes, knight takes, rook e1. We can't play rook e8 because of bishop f4, pinning the knight. So we could go to c6 or g6 to stop rook e7. Could go rook e6 though. I just don't like. I don't like that. I feel like knight e5 makes sense. Let's do it. Let's do it. Knight could also be coming into d3. Now the thing is. He's probably going to play a move like rook d2, e2, looking to double up. And if we move our knight... If we move our knight and rook takes e8, rook takes e8, then f5 might hang. But after that, don't we just have knight d3? Rook takes e8, rook takes e8... B2's potentially falling. F5 is no longer under attack because the bishop blocks the attack. This looks nice. I feel like our opponent's just helping us out here. I feel like the critical line was something like rookie 2, which I will note. Um, 27, rook e2. So maybe that was the way to go about it. Again, these notes that I'm making will go over in the post-game analysis. Also, if you're enjoying the video so far, drop a like and a subscribe so you get notified when the next episode of the Rating Climb comes out. Only if you're enjoying, obviously. If you're not enjoying, then why are you watching this far? C4 looks nice. Just gluing the knight in. The problem with knight takes here is rook b1 or rook d7. If c4, b3, we always have b4 to keep the knight glued in place. 
I like that idea. I think because the knight also controls the e1 square and um, blocks off the d file, we're taking a lot of counterplay away from our opponent. And even though it might not be objectively the best line, it might be the best line, it might not be, but even if it isn't, it just gets rid of counterplay for our opponent, which is a very human way of playing. G6 looks natural, just to secure this pawn. Bishop isn't threatening to do anything. So I'm going to play it. Just make sure f5 is guarded. Yep, b4, like I b3 even. Like I said, b5, to try and defend. If he takes, he does open up the b file. But his a pawn is also weak to a move like rookie 2. <laughs> Our knight can remain there. We, we're doing pretty well. Yeah, it is a move. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. A6. We're opening up lines on the queen side by allowing this. But I think it's worth it to keep the knight on d3. Just because it controls some critical squares. And blocks off the d file. Arguably more importantly. And also because we've now pushed these pawns, there's no targets on the seventh rank. Could argue that means our king's quite weak. Maybe it is quite weak. But also his king might be quite weak. So there's that. I've got to make sure I tr don't get perpetual though. We might have to play a move like rook f7 at some point to defend the second rank. Here we obviously take. Yeah, as expected. Oh, he's threatening rook b6 with a fork. Hmm. Now, we do have rook e2, rook b6, and knight e1 attacking g2. But... If g3, rook g2, king h1, we're losing a piece. So, rook e2, rook b6. We could just go rook e6. We're allowing the rook to b7, but there's actually no targets on the 7th rank. This rook also stops any bishop f6 checks. So that's nice. It looks maybe a bit passive. But. We maybe have ideas of f4, f3. In the future. He might play rook b7 and try and double up on the b file. Which would be a smart plan to try and give perpetuals if he can trade the rooks off because his bishop cuts off the king's escapes. So I need to watch out for that. Annoyingly. Hmm. What do I do after rook b7? I do have knight c5. But then rook b4. And c4 is falling. Maybe rook c8? Oh no, that doesn't defend. So rook b7. Rook f e8. Rook f e rook f b1. We can play, if we go rookie one check to trade the rooks, there's going to be perpetuals, like I said before, because our king is weak. Hmm. If the pawn was back on f7, I'd be, I'd be very happy with this position, and I'd consider it winning, because the king would have safety, but with no pawns protecting the king from, like, lateral angles makes it a bit more difficult 
to try not to get perpetualed. That can't be right. That can't be right. No way. No way. Now I'd like to play rookie one to trade the rooks because this is a terrible rook. Okay. How about rookie one check king h2 knight e5? Looking at knight g4. Does that even work? I don't know. What might be better is rook e2 threatening knight f1. Rook g3, that looks very passive. Although maybe g6 becomes weak. Hmm. Knight e5. Knight e5. The rook is running out of squares though. Because here and here it gets forked. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I missed that. Ah, uh, damn it. Damn. Oh, why? Why do I always do this to myself? This is terrible. Okay. Ah, man. Why did I allow this? I was up a pawn. I was up a pawn. Hmm. Fair play to my opponent. Hmm. What to do? What to do? I need to try and win C3. I think that's the plan. If I can win C3, this pawn is pretty close to promotion. I don't want to take because then takes. I want him to take here and then I can take here and win C3. Then rook F3. Maybe I can hold into a draw. Because I am a pawn down at this point. I might just have to try and hold into a draw. Which is annoying. Because I definitely had the advantage. You could even just take all my pawns. I'd just be left at the C pawn. Which might just be completely losing. But I've got no way of saving them. So... I'm going to go king d6 to stop rook c5. I know he's got a lot of scary looking pawns. But something like a5, I think I just have rook a3. And he might actually struggle to stop the c pawn. It's, it's my best bet regardless of what is objectively the best. K3, H5, C3, H6, C2, H7, C8, Queen, H8, Queen. I have no checks. Ah.
have no checks. Because he's covering f4. I'm going to go here. So I'm able to get back to the defense. At least I'm creating chances though. I'm down two pawns, but I am creating drawing chances. The problem is if we both queen and I can't check him, my king is way too like way too out in the open. I'm just going to lose. The one thing we do have going is his king is very passive and mine is not. Okay, we should be winning the pawn now. If h7, rook h6 check, and we pick the pawn up. Now, king is escorting this pawn. We might actually be able to grind this out. The only issue is I have 30 seconds. Oh, he has rook h5. Rook h5, c2, h7, c1, queen, h8, queen, but then we have queen f4 check, the king goes to the back rank, he's mated, wait, does that keep an eye on f4 when we promote, this is crazy, rook h4, No, that can't be the way to play. That can't be it. Let's ignore this. I don't want this. I want to win his rook. This might... No, it can't be a draw. The only thing is my king could get stranded. We might have to sack the rook for the pawn. Don't get me wrong, it'd still be an amazing save. What about rook g6 check? The king's too far away from this pawn. The king's going to have to go to h3. Yeah, but then I have this. Let's go! Rook f6 check. And bang. Let's go! Oh my god. No way have I just pulled that back. I do not deserve that at all. My opponent played so well. But hey, that's chess for you. Let's get into the analysis. I'm so pumped. Oh my god. Alright, that game was definitely not clean whatsoever. Very low accuracies, 68 for my opponent, 73 for me. Just going to have to take my word for it. But, interesting game. We have the Karo Khan, trans sorry, the Slav, transposing to the Karo. Knight c3 takes takes in knight d7, bishop d3, knight gf6. And yeah, knight g3 just isn't the best. H oh, h5 is a mistake? Why? Because of knight f3? What? h4? Knight f5? h3? g3? e6? Okay, so how do you punish knight g3? I mean, this is how you learn openings, guys. Um, how do you punish that? e5 and if takes this is better for black huh I guess black just gets really rapid development so that's worth bearing in mind if your opponent plays knight g3 in the Karpov play e5 
I didn't. I played h5. Opponent played h4, which wasn't good. Knight g4 is also bad. <laughs> all, all my um, thinking has just gone out the window now, I swear. But ah, it's just engines for you. Knight f3. Knight df6 is fine. Bishop g5. Okay, it prefers queen, does it? It calls bishop b6 an inaccuracy, but it quite likes it, so I don't know why it's doing that. Rook b1. And yeah, bishop b6 was not the way to go at all. My opponent can actually just castle. And if I take on a2, then rook a1, bishop e6. White just has too much development. And I made a note in my notes after bishop e3, if, sorry, if bishop e6, b3, queen a5 check, queen d2, queen a2, yeah, castle is massive advantage for white. This is what I assume, just because it's so difficult to develop with the black pieces, even though you're up a pawn, it is not worth it. So e6 is best, or g6, but I went for e6. g6 makes sense, actually, because then you leave this bishop open. But I wanted the bishop on this d6 square, so that's what I did. Knight e4, you have to trade. Yeah, you, you really do have to trade. Queen c7 was apparently a better move. e5 opens the game up too much. I should take on d4 even. f5 is not good because of this. But then I thought I had bishop c5. Whoa, what? This is better for white? Oh, because the queen gets to d6. Huh. Okay, okay, well, very computer way to play. From a distance, this looked very good for me, because I didn't consider rook takes f2 to be a viable move. And if it was, I thought it would just be losing. Instead of knight takes first, can you play bishop takes then? Apparently not. Apparently it's still losing. Okay. Well, that's not a very human way to play, really. Bishop c2, e4, queen e2, castle, check, king h7, knight e5. And yeah, this is the line I have to play. And here I went c5, which is apparently bad. Apparently this is better. Attack the pawn like this. Bishop f4, a5, a4, rook e8. This pawn is a problem though. So I thought it was better to blockade the pawn with c5. But e6 is a blunder. It just gives me a. Oh. Wait, what? Queen d6 first, threatening mate, and then g3. And then take. And then f3 isn't as big of a deal? Why? You just give this up. Oh, because then you can put a knight on f3. Because you induced g3 with queen d6. Hard to see from a distance. I just automatically took on e6, but... Whoa. Cool line. f3. Yeah, knight f6 is playable, but I was worried about bishop takes. And then I just thought I was worse. I can take on h4. But still... Am I, just, am I down? No, equal material. Nah, I don't like this. I preferred knight e5. And then going back to g4. Oh, apparently I should... See, I did consider this move. I did consider it. I wasn't sure. After this, 
Rook f1, the rook can't takes the queen hangs, but I fought king f1. And then queen d6, threatening mate on h2. And there's no, there's no good way to defend it. I massively underestimated the power of that. I think from a distance, I assumed bishop f4 covers everything. But because rook f8 comes with a tempo on the king, bishop f4 is not playable. Because you go down a piece. So rook e8 is a miss because of e5. Well done to my opponent for finding that. Taking is fine. Knight takes. And yeah, here, I was expecting something like rook e2 or rook, B3, or rook e3. So rook e2 hangs a rook. So let's not do that. Let's go rook e3. So the this doesn't hang a rook, so the bishop protects. Knight g4. If takes takes, can you take here? Apparently this is better for me. But this was the line I was looking at. And the line I thought my opponent would play. Bishop f4, knight d3. Just isn't as good because c4. G6 is a mistake, because I need the h7 square for my king. Yeah, because it definitely came back to bite later in the game. Because the way that I was activating my rooks wasn't very good, because I was always worried about perpetual checks. Because obviously I was trying to win, because I was a pawn up. F4 is better. I did consider it, but I didn't see what I was going to do with the pawn. Thought it might become a weakness, but maybe not. Maybe just glues white's position together. So g6 is bad. This is all fine. Takes, takes, rook b1. Uh, here I needed rook b8. I should have found that. I really should have found that. And nobody wants to take anyone. Because if he takes me, I'm sorted. I'm going to infiltrate via the b file. And if I take him... He's sorted because he's going to infiltrate via the B file. So we just have a bit of a standoff. But I'd be able to make some progress. Maybe? Rookie 6 is not good. But Rook F3, yeah, it is an inaccuracy. Rook F8, Rook B7. This is the critical line. But I need it. Mm, okay, so the computer does like my idea of knight e5, right? As long as bishop f6 check isn't a move. So the computer wants rook to. No, sorry, king g8. So that knight e5 can be played. Say a5 is played. Then knight e5. And then there's no bishop here. So after the rook moves. Rook e2. And I'm just putting a lot of pressure. Huh. Yeah, I just blundered bishop f6. And here the position is just better for white because he's just up material. a5 is bad. That was impulsive. Rook 1e3 is better. Yeah, just going straight for the c-pawn. I was worried this pawn would become a problem, so I wanted to safeguard that first. But okay, we caused some problems, and here we're actually drawing despite being down two pawns. We're almost drawing. There's, there's going to be a lot of mistakes um, from here on because it's a rook and pawn endgame. It's very complicated, so let's not worry too much. H5 c3 rook f2 apparently g4 here because i guess you can sack the rook for the pawns if these pawns get far enough because one rook can't stop two pawns once they get to the sixth rank good thing to know at least yeah yeah a rook, a rook can't stop two pawns once they reach the sixth rank so h6 is bad, and we are better after rook e6. Rook f5, king goes up, 
Rook F4, King goes up. And Rook F1 is just completely losing. What was I expecting, even? Rook H4, C2. What? Push. Queen. Queen. I did see this check. This isn't playable because then the rook gets involved, I assume. Or the queen. This is complicated, but there's only like a f certain way to mate. Uh, hard to find. And if the king retreats. What? Queen g3 is the only winning move? B8 is covered by the queen. This diagonal is covered. Whoa. And rook e1 is going to be mate. So the computer wants this. There's a whole series of only moves here. You can't see the analysis, but there's no way a human finds that. So that's why I was expecting rook h6. Sorry. Back at the start of this line. That's why I fought rook h4. And I wasn't sure I could win this. I thought that it was drawing. And although the computer says otherwise, in reality, with the lines I've just shown, I've got to find some insane moves to win the game and everything else draws. So in my eyes, it's a draw. My opponent doesn't find that though. He goes rook f1. And here I just take the pawn. C2. And... Yeah, I'm going to win the rook. Rook g6 check makes my job even easier. I assumed he had to play king h3. But then I queen. This pawn is so far away. Like, something like g4. And I can just bring the king. And he doesn't have enough time to push the pawn. Because once he gets here, I'm winning everything. And he's getting mated. So, yeah. I mean, here I just win the rook. King e2, if that was played, then I just queen like this. I mop up the pawns, easy win. But rook takes f1, just winning the rook outright is just as good. And that's the game. I got lucky. I got very lucky with that game. I should not have won that. I think I played the opening and the middle game quite well. I was happy with it, but the end game, like the, the early end game, very sloppy. Rest of the end game recovered though. So that's just chess for you. That's just chess. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.